Hello everyone, myself Priza Sadaqat. I have a bachelor's degree in dentistry and a master's in public health. And I have been associated with my Aussie tutor since the past one and a half years in academic writing. So today's topic is epilepsy and its diagnosis. It is a very important topic that comes up in clinical nursing case studies and in medical case studies as well. So let's start by today's topic by first of all understanding what epilepsy is and what are its various types. What is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a neurological disorder and its primary identifying factor is recurrent unprovoked seizures. Seizure is defined as a basically abnormal electrical activity that occurs in the brain that causes seizures. This brain activity affects how a person feels, acts and behaves. Depending on the seizure type and severity, a person may or may not lose consciousness. A person is diagnosed with epilepsy if they have two unprovoked seizures or one unprovoked seizure with the likelihood of more that were not caused by some known and reversible medical condition like alcohol withdrawal or extremely low blood sugar. The seizures in epilepsy may be related to a brain injury or a family tendency, but often the cause is completely unknown. The word epilepsy does not indicate anything about the cause of the person's seizures or their severity. Many people with epilepsy have more than one type of seizure and may have other symptoms of neuro- neurological problems as well. So various types of epilepsies. There are several types of seizures in epilepsy. The person with epilepsy can experience one or two multiple types of seizures. The three primary seizures that are described are generalized seizures, focal seizures and unknown seizures. The four different types of epilepsy that are defined by the type of seizure a person experiences are also generalized epilepsy, focal epilepsy, combined generalized and focal epilepsy and unknown epilepsy. Each type of epilepsy affects the brain differently. This means they have different identifying factors and treatments as well. Moving on. First of all, what is generalized epilepsy? People with this type of epilepsy have generalized seizures. These affect both the left and the right sides of the brain. Additionally, these seizures may be either motor, which involve physical movement, or non-motor, which do not. If someone has a motor seizure, they may experience jerking movements, weakness of the limb hips, limp limbs, weakness, tense or rigid muscles, muscle twitching, and full body epileptic spasms. Non-motor seizures are also called as absent seizures. Symptoms might include staring into space, a sudden stop in the movement, brief twitches, fluttering eyelids. Okay, focal epilepsy. Moving on, people with focal epilepsy have focal seizures. Unlike generalized seizures, focal seizures only affect one part of the brain. They can start in one area and move to others. These seizures can begin with an aura, which are minor symptoms signifying the seizure's onset. This can feel like an uneasy feeling in the stomach, similar to the feeling of riding a roller coaster. As the seizure progresses, a person can experience motor and non-motor symptoms both. Some motor symptoms of focal seizures include muscle twitching, jerking, spasms, repeated movements like clapping or chewing. Non-motor symptoms do not affect how someone moves. However, they may cause confusion or changes in emotions. Some non-motor symptoms of focal seizures include waves of hot or cold, goosebumps, lack of movement, changes in emotions or thoughts. Moving on, what are combined generalized and focal seizures? Someone with a combination epilepsy has both generalized seizures and focal seizures. Therefore, they can experience a mixture of the symptoms that have been discussed previously in the two slides. So, combined epilepsy is linked to Dravet syndrome, which is a rare lifelong form of epilepsy. It is usually caused by a mutation in the SC1N1A gene. Because it is often misdiagnosed, people who think they are a family member may have these seizures should conduct a doctor. Unknown epilepsy. If doctors do not know where seizures originate, they will diagnose a person with unknown epilepsy. People with unknown epilepsy can have a combination of motor and non-motor symptoms. Motor seizures often present as tonic-clonic or previously referred to as grand mal seizures. These seizures can have the following symptoms. Stiffening and loss of consciousness, rapid rhythmic jerking and convulsing, bluish face from lack of oxygen, loss of bladder control, loss of bowel control. These seizures usually last 1 to 3 minutes. If they last more than 5 minutes, emergency services need to be called immediately and the patient needs to be taken to the hospital where the nurse or the doctor available in the emergency needs to work immediately on the patient. Unknown epilepsy also presents with non-motor symptoms which can consist of the following, a sudden stop in a moment, vacant staring into space and stillness. How do we diagnose epilepsy? So the most commonly used method methodology for diagnosis of epilepsy is electroencephalography, that is EEG. A routine EEG is a monitoring of electrical signals in the brain with electrodes attached to the scalp. 
first performed by a specialized outpatient clinic that is interpreted or read by a trained neurologist may find evidence of abnormal electrical activity in the brain and figure out the type of seizures a patient is having as well as the origin by measuring the brain waves over minutes to a couple of hours prolonged eeg if a routine eeg is normal diagnosing seizures may require a stay in an epilepsy monitoring unit for continuous eeg monitoring with video over several days prolonged video eeg monitoring uses the video camera to capture onset and characteristics of seizures simultaneously along with the eeg Radiological testing, functional magnetic resonance imaging of the brain can help locate areas where speech, memory, movement or other functions take place. The general brain area is responsible for these activities but can help in pinpointing them more precisely through a functional MRI. Positron emission tomography is also a brain scan that is called as an intracytal fluorodeoxyglucose PET scan which can show changes in brain metabolism and chemistry which is valuable in evaluating patients with many different conditions affecting the brain especially epilepsy intracranial monitoring physicians use intracranial monitoring technology to observe the characteristics of a patient's seizures and correlate these findings with the electroencephalogram or the EEG findings Depth electrodes are small multi-contact probes that are inserted through small holes made in the skull and the coverings of the brain. Strip and grid electrodes, they these small platinum discs are set in a sheet of plastic and inserted underneath the covering of the brain called the dura. And neuropsychological assessment is also another way some people with epilepsy suffer from memory problems or other cognitive difficulties such as trouble coming up with the correct word to use in a conversation. These problems may result from repeated seizures, medication or a brain disease that is causing the seizures. A quantitative assessment can provide insight into the severity and indicate the location of lesions that are causing the seizures. Neuropsychological assessments can gauge a patient's cognitive thinking abilities as they relate to the function of different brain structures. For example, impaired memory might indicate an and normality in the function of parts of the brain called the temporal lobe and the frontal lobe so that's it for today there are various methods for diagnosis i hope you understood all of them appropriately for diagnosing epilepsy that is the methodology that can be used and the assessments that need to be conducted in order to diagnose epilepsy and epileptic seizure activity in the patient appropriately uh, so that's it for today thank you very much hope to see you again with another topic another day thank you so much